Hello everyone, my name is Dr. Ominde and I'm going to be teaching this on behalf of Professor Ekbigbe. So today we are going to discuss the cerebrum. So our objectives today are external features of the cerebrum, the cerebral lobes, gray matter in the functional areas, then we briefly discuss the white matter and finally the basal ganglia. The cerebrum is the largest division of the brain and it's usually divided into two hemispheres, the right and the left hemispheres, and each of these hemispheres is divided into four lobes. So that is a uh, pictorial presentation of the brain and um, it shows you the cerebrum and below the cerebrum we have what you call the cerebellum. So the cerebrum has poles. We have a frontal pole in blue, the green pole is a temporal pole, and posteriorly we have the occipital pole. And the brain, the hemispheres have surfaces, so you have a superior lateral surface, the medial surface, and the inferior surface of the brain. It has a superior medial border, inferior lateral border, and a medial border. So the cerebral cortex is the outermost layer of the gray matter, and usually the cerebral hemisphere has the outer gray matter and an inner white matter. So it is the gray matter that forms the cerebral cortex. So this cortex is usually um, basically just to discuss the external surface of the brain. It has what you call the elevated ridges of uh, uh, what forms the gyra and also grooves that divide this gyra and that's what we call the salsa. So we have a major one which is the central sulcus and this divides the frontal lobe from the parietal lobe. Then we have what you call the fissures. These are deep grooves. If you're to compare as fissure from a sulcus, uh, fissures are deep grooves. And we have a longitudinal fissure that separates the right from the left cerebral hemisphere. We have the transverse fissure that separates the um, cerebrum from the cerebellum. And we have a sylvian or lateral fissure that separates the temporal lobe from the frontal and parietal lobes. So the arrows are indicating um, the different parts, external uh, parts, uh, the parts of the external surface of the brain. So we have the um, gyri, which are the ridges, the grooves, which are the salsi, and we have a fissure there, that's the um, sylvian or lateral fissure, which is deep. Again, that pictorial presentation is showing you a parietal lobe in green, frontal lobe in blue. So parietal and frontal lobe are separated by a central sulcus. Then posteriorly, the pink portion is the occipital lobe and below the lateral fissure is the temporal lobe. And you can appreciate the cerebellum being separated from the cerebrum by the transverse fissure. Then the longitudinal fissure separates the left from the right hemisphere. So those are the different lobes of the brain, frontal lobe, parietal lobe, occipital lobe, and the temporal lobe. So um, frontal lobe we've said separated from parietal lobe by the central sulcus, uh, temporal lobe separated from frontal and, and parietal lobe by the lateral sulcus, and the transverse, uh, lateral fissure, sorry, and the transverse fissure separates the cerebrum from the cerebellum. So usually we have what you call the insula, which is the fifth lobe, and this is deep uh, to the temporal lobe. So basically that's a, a diagram illustrating the different gyra and salsi of the brain. So within the frontal lobe we have a superior frontal gyrus, middle frontal gyrus and inferior frontal gyrus. And the inferior frontal gyrus as you can see has three parts, pars orbitalis, pars triangularis and pars opicularis. And pars uh, triangularis and opicularis form what you call the broker's area which we shall discuss. Then frontal lobe is separated from the uh, from the parietal lobe by the central sulcus. So that's a post-central gyrus. And the remaining part of the central uh, parietal uh, lobe is divided into an inferior parietal lobule and a superior parietal lobule. So the inferior parietal lobule has what you call the angular gyrus and the supramarginal gyrus. And this supramarginal gyrus forms what you call the Wernicke's area. So the temporal lobe is usually separated from frontal and parietal by the lateral fissure. And the temporal gyrus is divided into superior temporal gyrus, middle temporal gyrus, and inferior temporal gyrus. Then the occipital gyrus, there it is. Um, you have your lunate sulcus there and um, the different parts which we'll be able to appreciate 
in the subsequent um, slides. So again, that's a temporal lobe, that's a frontal lobe, that's parietal lobe, okay? And this is our post-central gyrus and the central sulcus here. So this is a pre-central gyrus. Pre-central is on the frontal lobe and post-central is on the parietal lobe. That's the occipital lobe. Again, frontal lobe has superior frontal gyrus, middle and inferior. And the inferior has pars orbitalis, triangularis and opicularis. Pars triangularis and opicularis form the broca's area for motor speech. Central sulcus separating parietal lobe from frontal lobe. And in front of it, we have the precentral gyrus. And posterior to it, we have the postcentral gyrus. The parietal lobe is divided into superior parietal gyrus, inferior parietal gyrus, and the remaining portion, we have the supramarginal and the angular gyrus. It's a supramarginal gyrus at the peak of the lateral uh, fissure and usually forms the Wernicke's area, which is sensory speech area. The temporal lobe, as I have said, is divided into a superior temporal gyrus, middle temporal gyrus, and inferior temporal gyrus. And the occipital lobe is there. So this is the medial aspect of the brain. Uh, just to show you, the uh, frontal lobe, parietal lobe, this is frontal lobe, okay, uh, parietal lobe, occipital lobe. So this is the parietal occipital fissure. It's only on the medial surface of the brain. It separates the uh, parietal gyrus from the occipital lobe. Then you have calcarine sulcus. Calcarine sulcus meets the parietal occipital fissure and together they form a Y-shaped. So that's the parietal occipital fissure. That's the calcarine sulcus. So dorsal to it is the lingual gyrus and ventral to the calcarine sulcus is the cuneate gyrus. So those are the two major gyri of the occipital lobe dorsal lingual and ventral cuneate gyrus and these parts the portions of this gyra that forms the banks of the calcarine sulcus are the primary visual centers which we shall discuss that's the cingulate gyrus and it's uh, separated by the single uh, cingulate sulcus from the remaining parts of the frontal and parietal lobes again that's the superior frontal gyrus middle frontal gyrus and the inferior one we can't appreciate in this view then this is the central sulcus anterior to it is the pre-central gyrus and posterior to it is the post-central gyrus so this is the parietal lobe from here anterior is the frontal lobe that's the central sulcus pre-central gyrus okay then that's the longitudinal fissure that's our parietal lobe frontal lobe frontal pole occipital pole and medially you can appreciate the um, parietal occipital fissure. Okay. Then the frontal lobe generally is located deep to the frontal bone, and we have said that anterior to the central sulcus, this is the central sulcus, anterior to it is a precentral gyrus that forms the primary motor area that's responsible for motor functions in the body. Then anterior boundary of the precentral gyrus is the precentral sulcus. Then remaining part of the frontal lobe is divided into superior middle and inferior frontal gyri. So the inferior frontal gyri is divided into three, okay, by two ascending rami, that and that. So we have pars orbitalis, pars triangularis, and pars opicularis. Pars orbitalis, triangularis, and opicularis on the inferior frontal gyrus. You can appreciate here, that's a central sulcus. So that's the parietal lobe, that's the frontal lobe. This is the precentral primary motor of the frontal lobe. That's the superior frontal gyrus, the middle frontal gyrus, and the inferior that's divided into pars, orbitalis, triangularis, and opicularis. Again, this is the ventral surface of the frontal lobe. This is the frontal lobe. So you have that you need to appreciate. This is the gyra recta. Rectus means straight. So this is gyrus rectus. Then we have an olfactory sulcus here, usually for the olfactory um, tract, olfactory sulcus for olfactory tract. And then that's the gyra recti here, and the rest is the orbital, orbital gyra. Okay. So orbital gyrus, all this is orbital gyra with orbital sulcus. So it's divided into anterior, posterior, medial, and lateral orbital gyra. But all this is orbital gyra, and that is. Um, gyra recti. So you can appreciate olfactory tract on this other side. This olfactory bulb and this is olfactory tract. So olfactory bulb and tract 
within the olfactory sulcus will separate the gyra recti from the orbital gyrus. And orbital gyrus is divided by orbital sulcus, which is H-shaped, divides this into an anterior orbital gyrus, posterior orbital gyrus, lateral, and a medial orbital gyrus. The functional areas of the frontal lobe, so we have already discussed the primary motor, the premotor, that's for coordination of fine somatic motor activity. So this is um, movement of skeletal muscles and especially the distal muscles. Number two, we have uh, the motor speech area of the Broca's area, which is formed by pars triangularis and pars opercularis on the inferior frontal gyrus. Then we have the prefrontal areas at the uh, frontal pole for cognitive function, and this in, uh, involves intelligence, inhibition, initiative, memory, determination, reasoning, personality, and judgment. We also have the olfactory function for smell, limbic function, which is uh, located at the olfactory cortex, and the cingulate gyra. So these are the five functional areas of the frontal lobe. The primary motor area are the pre-central gyrus, so you need to know the function and where it's located. Okay, so pre-central uh, gyrus is the primary motor area. Pars opercularis and pars triangularis of the inferior frontal gyrus is the motor speech of Broca's area. What do I mean by motor speech? Articulation, the way the mouth is able to move, that is motor speech. Then cognitive functions are the uh, frontal pole that will involve intelligence, initiative, memory, determination, reasoning, personality, judgment. Number four, we have olfactory function near the olfactory uh, area and then you have limbic where you have the olfactory cortex and the cingulate gyrus which I showed you the cingulate gyrus on the middle surface of the brain. So that's the frontal lobe, the, the central sulcus separating it from parietal lobe. So that's the superior frontal gyrus, then the middle frontal gyrus and the inferior frontal gyrus divided into pars orbitalis, pars triangularis and pars opacularis. So these triangularis and opacularis are the Broca's area. Okay, so that's a pre-central gyrus that forms the primary motor cortex. Okay, then the Broca's area bypass opacularis and triangularis. Then the orbitofrontal cortex. Okay, the olfactory bulb. So around that area we have the olfactory cortex. And then on the medial aspect we've talked of limbic that will serve uh, the function, uh, uh, the cingulate gyrus. We'll later discuss what limbic uh, the system is all about. So then we go to the parietal lobe. So parietal lobe, as we all know, it's separated from the frontal lobe by the central sulcus, and it's usually deep under the parietal bone. And medially, you can appreciate a parietal occipital sulcus that separates it from the occipital lobe. So um, it has different functional areas. So the postcentral gyrus is the first one which is the primary sensory area. So that's where all sensations from the body go to. Then after that, we uh, after the post-central gyrus, the remaining part of the parietal lobe is divided into a superior part and an inferior part. So the superior part is the sensory association area. Superior parietal lobule is the sensory association area, and the inferior parietal lobule is divided into two, a supramarginal gyra and an angular gyra. And we said the supramarginal, it's at the banks of the lateral sulcus and it forms the Wernicke's area which is sensory speech. Sensory speech is the fact that you can listen to sound and be able to interpret while I said motor speech at the Broca's area is being able to articulate. So the main functions of the parietal lobe are the primary sensory area at the post central gyrus, sensory association area at the inferior parietal lobule, sensory speech which is Wernicke's area at the supramarginal gyrus, the limbic area at the singular, remember singular gyrus spans from frontal towards the parietal lobe. Then we have what you call the gustatory area at the paraninsula, and this paraninsula area is located deep to the parietal lobe. When you look at the lateral sulcus at this portion, if you open it up on the inferior aspect of the parietal lobe, deep here within the lateral fissure, that's where you find the gustatory, which is the insula, paraninsula region for taste, gustatory is taste. So this is the post-central gyrus for primary sensory, okay? Then it's separated from uh, motor area by central sulcus. Then the sensory association, the superior parietal lobule. Then the inferior one is divided into uh, supramarginal and, 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 uh, and uh, 
sorry, supramarginal and angular. So supramarginal is around here. That forms the Wernicke's area. That's the gustatory region. So we have what you call acute fasciculars, and these usually connect Broca's and Wernicke's area. Broca's is on the frontal lobe and Wernicke's area.